Here in the south, where we are, we don't have to worry about hard freezes very often. Uh, but I do get a lot of questions, people asking me about um, hard freezes and how they can protect their pump and their pipes and what they do. Now, if you have a shallow well like I do that has a foot valve in the bottom, the only way to drain the water is to pull the pump, pull out the pipe, drain the pipe, and then you put it all back in ready for priming and water the next time that you need it. There's no real way around that. Well, I've come up with something that I think works in solving the problem of having to pull all this stuff out. So if you're interested in seeing how you can drain this without pulling it all out, let me show you what we're going to do. Here's everything we're going to need to make our changes to the foot valve. We're going to use a brass washer, fishing line, and some epoxy to glue it to a bolt to make a pressure relief system for this. So what we're gonna do first is to disassemble our foot valve. There's a little Phillips bolt on the bottom and this just keeps sediment, not sediment, but larger pieces of stuff from coming in to the valve. Okay, that's all there is to that. Here's our valve system. So how this works is when you pull water up, suction allows this to move up, allowing water to pass through here and come up your pipe. When the suction stops, this closes and the water can't run back out. What we need to do is to develop a way that from up top, without us having to remove this, we can relieve the pressure of this so water can bleed back out so we don't have to uh, pull everything uh, for uh, winterization of this. Okay, so what we need to do is remove this. We don't have to take it all apart, but I'm gonna show you how it works. We need everybody's favorite, the 10 millimeter. How I grew up without a 10 millimeter, I don't know. Now I can't keep one. Okay. There we go. Here's all this. There's a nut on the end. There's a spring retaining cap, a spring, and the plunger itself. And all it is, a piece of brass with an O-ring. That's what seals this up, kind of like a sink drain. Uh, anyway, what we're gonna do now use our epoxy we're going to mix up and we're going to glue this to the outside of our bolt just put it in the center let's get it all cleaned up first before we get started and you don't need to see me mixing all this i'll be right back i should mention because i neglected to before um, when you use the washer, use either brass or stainless steel because all the parts of this are brass or stainless steel so they won't rust. Now, before we adhere the bolt, or excuse me, the, the nut to this washer, you want to take a small, as small a bit as you can, just something enough for this uh, fishing line to go through and drill a hole through the edge of the washer. 
now we've got our hole drilled so we can proceed to getting this nut attached. So you need so little of this stuff, it's not even funny. So what we need to do just on the outsides, you don't want to get close to the thread. And then just center this here on it. And let it sit. Find some something to keep some pressure on it. Uh, now all we do is wait till it dries. Okay, we're ready for reassembly. We got our piece glued up. And this is what's gonna accept our fishing line. So we need to go ahead and get this put back together. Now, something I should have mentioned in the beginning, when you choose a washer, it's obvious that you need, well, I thought it was obvious, that you need one that fits smoothly, actually it would go this way, in here with no obstruction. Well, I had chosen one that fit that way, except I found I had some burrs in this frame right here. So I just took a Dremel tool, deburring tool, and just knocked them down. So if you run into something like that, that's easy enough to fix. This is brass, so it's real soft, it's easy to do. But just make sure that you get a washer. You want one as large as you can get in here, but you don't want it binding on the sides or touching the sides at all. Okay, that being said, let's put this back together. And remember, you don't have to take this whole thing apart. I did this to show you um, um, how it functioned. Um, all you need to do is take the bolt, or excuse me, the nut off the end. Okay, get our plunger assembly in and our spring, and it's wider at one end than the other. The wider end goes over this cap right here. Then we use our, this is the spring retainer that we're gonna drop. Let's pull it back. Put it up over there. Now we put this back on. We want the washer at the far end. And the reason we do this, you could tie the line in here, right in here. But then you're relying on it to stay tight on this shaft to push this up. And you're relying on the spring, it'll be sitting like this, and you're relying on the spring to push this up. And it may not push it as well is if you're physically pushing the entire rod, and that's what we're gonna get with this right here. Okay, just tighten it back down. Just won't. I'm gonna put this one back the way that it was, and the uh, ends of the thread were almost to the end of the nut. And that's what we're gonna do. So now we're all back together. All that's left to do is to put on the screen. Now, here's a suggestion before you put it on. Go ahead, and that hole that you've drilled, go ahead and get it out to the side here, like so. And what you're going to want to do is kind of see how this fits on there, and then you're going to want to choose one of these 
up high. And you're gonna to wanna to run the line through there and then tie it to this and then assemble it. Because remember, you're pulling this direction. So you don't want to run the line in down here. You want to run it up high, and you want to run it in line with where our drilled hole is. So, just to get it started, because you don't want to run this entire line through here after you finish. So, there's my hole and up here, say, I can come up, see I'm gonna come up right around here. That will be fine with me. That should be high enough to load out. We're just gonna go ahead and bring that through. Now, we'll tie that to here. It's just gonna save us trouble later. Now, if you wanted to, and you fancy fishermen, and you have those, what are they called, cable ferrules or uh, cable sleeves or line sleeves, you could just clamp that over the end and you'd be done. We're going to just tie us a little square knot in here. In fact, we're going to double it just because... Remember, this is not supporting any weight. All it's doing is pulling on this spring. There. Then, I'll just trim off that little excess. You don't want that on there. Okay, now, I'm gonna run that up through. this back in. All right, now our foot valve is all back together. Here's our line. If we pull on it, it releases. So now we're going to go reattach this to our pipe and we're going to drop it down the well running this line out alongside the pipe. Okay, we've got enough fishing line run. We got our foot valve back on and we're going to drop the, the water line back in our casing pipe. Just kind of want to keep be aware of where your line is to not mess it up and just start work that back down in the well. I could grab that if it fell in. I don't want it to go by that far. Okay, we got plenty of line left. So what I'll do is I don't need all this on here. I don't know if you can tell, it's starting to rain now. Never fails. Okay, we got our line cut. Now, because I've got extra room in here from where my pipe is going to come through you could drill a hole in here and run your line through it or you can just run it through the same hole I'm choosing to run it through the same hole because I have room There we go. Now, got 
this on. Got my line out. Now, reattach the pump. And you know to do this right, tape it up. Use a wrench to get it good and tight because if you don't, any little bit of air seepage in this will keep it from working correctly. Okay, now <laughs> I need to run the line through the outside of that right there. Okay, now I've got this. I threw something in my pocket. However you want to tie this stuff down so you don't lose it or it fall back down in the well. Got old air fitting that I can't use. loop it through that that's tied everybody loves what somebody tie knots oh okay there we go now So now it's going to, let's say it's going to freeze. This pump is full of water and a pipe is full of water. All I have to do, pull up on this and it releases the pressure down there and it allows the water to vent out. Now it's not going to be instantaneous. It's going to take a little while um, for the, the vacuum to ease and for it to slowly go down to the static water level but it will do that now if it takes a little longer than you want or you need to do it in a hurry to help it just remove the top oh man mine down in there there we go. Let's remove the top and the flapper assembly that's in there that looks like this. What you're going to want to do is just get something and pull up on that. That'll let all the water run out of the pump and it will also um, help that uh, vacuum decrease and all the water will run back to static water level and then you're set. So, I hope this little idea will help somebody that's having to deal with winterization on a pump and uh, this will serve a good purpose if it does. Um, again, hope this helps somebody and good luck with your projects.